everyone, it's Luke with Belding Hill Farms. If you haven't uh, been here before, thanks for watching. Tonight we're going to uh, show you a little video about uh, using a uh, Model 105 uh, DeLaval cream separator, electric cream separator. So the worst part about this for us is the cleaning because there's so many parts. You can see all these parts that are here. There's 35 of these discs um, and really it's just about putting this together in a in a the right way. So first thing, start with this guy, which is the in the bottom here. There's a little there's a little piece that connects to the spinning part of the electric separator. Put on our O-ring that goes in here, and if you look at these discs here, you'll see that there's one different shaped notch, this little kind of round notch here. And if you look on the front of this piece, there's a round notch here. So they each go together and that's how they slide on so this is a lot of monotony to put these on the right way but it's just uh, just keep putting these guys on so we'll quickly pause this video and I'll put these all on and then we'll restart it again when I've got them all on okay mm -hmm. all right so we're just getting the last couple of these put on here now There we go, there we go. All right, next piece to go on is this guy here. And he just kind of goes on top of that. There's not really a right or wrong way there. And then this guy here goes over top. And he's gonna, this little knob right there is gonna go inside of that. Oh, maybe, I think I got that backwards, sorry. This is going on first here. And that just goes down into that notch. <clears throat> there. Oh, I did have the right way. Sorry. This, uh, there's this washer here or nut that actually tightens it on it's got a thread internal that goes over top of this and you need to have the, the tool with these two prongs on it to actually go into these holes can you show that again yeah so if you see that nut that's right there this fits right into the holes there to, and that's what you use to tighten that with okay. so, and there is a, like the flat side goes downwards because you need to have these holes exposed to be able to tighten it. And you're not you're not going crazy, crazy tight on it. You're just making sure it's like, you know, it's beyond hand tight, but like not not super, super tight. So tighten okay. it. All right, so you're just tightening it up here. Nothing crazy. And that's it. That's like the whole, the cartridge that's all ready to go. All right. Okay, so on... Unlike my uh, grandfather's old uh, surge milker, this was not an item that was here at our farm. Uh, Joe and I picked this up a couple years ago in anticipation of getting a dairy cow at some point. Um, so it all looks a little rusty. We're going to get that cleaned up. We've only used this a couple of times. But essentially, when you look at this, there's a bigger groove in the back of this piece. And that lines up with this big groove here. And all it does is this, this sets down in that hole. And then each of these just kind of sit down over top of this leg. And that holds this from being steady. And, and we have it set right there so that the milk is going to come out of this down into this cartridge that we just made. So the next step to go on here is there's, there's a pin in here that may be difficult to see in the video, but it goes crossways. And it lines up with this crossway slot there. You just put that on there. Make sure I got that right. I did because it's spinning quite freely there now. Now, uh, we used this already and it did leak. Um, suspect that we either have, I see there was an old repair here on this one. So we may have to uh, re-repair it 
and it could just be that some of these uh, edges are a little worn out but you'll, none of this rusty stuff the milk doesn't touch that um, essentially the milk is going to go down through into the base of this cartridge and it's very similar to modern day centrifuges I worked at a brewery for 10 years and we used a very similar version um, it'll go down and then it'll come back up through the center again. so this is going to go on and this is going to go into our for us we're calling it a waste stream because uh, we're going to feed the skim milk that comes off of this to our pigs um, only because we have so much milk coming um, and uh, we'll have more milk this evening when we go to milk and and then this stream to so the top stream will be our cream that comes off okay so we get these two pieces on there I do expect it's going to leak here a little bit because it did last time. This one here, you can lift that up. That's going to go on here. This little float is basically, as you put the, the milk into there, it will kind of, it will float up to allow milk to go down the center hole here. And just make sure these are back to where they should be. And the last step is is our shuttlecock here so if that's lined up this way so if the handles pointing that way milk is going to flow if the handles pointed this way milk won't flow so to, so to begin with we don't want the milk flowing so now we'll uh, we're going to add some of our our milk here so we've had our milk out on the table kind of warming up a little bit just so we could uh, the cream and stuff that has separated um, we're hoping it's going to get back into the rest of the milk. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did with the discs. We have about 40, I think I counted about 46 liters or something here that's going to go in um, tonight. So uh, we'll pause the video, we'll get all of the cream into the big bowl and then we'll turn it back on when it uh, comes on. Again, to be clear, the reason that we're just putting our milk, which would be perfect milk to drink, into the uh, bucket is that we keep pigs as well, and uh, we can't use all the milk that we have coming right now, so we're trying to use uh, some of this milk to offset our feed costs for our pigs, and the pigs are more than happy with that arrangement. So it'll take a second until the comes from the cream side and there's the leak I was expecting all right so now you see we're just starting to get some of the cream and the whole system has to kind of get a little bit warmed up here should have a little more cream than what we're getting now. Okay, so you see now we are starting to get our stream here. It takes a second to kind of come up, and we're probably not being as efficient as we could be, but this little float in here will actually regulate the level in this upper part because when the level gets too high, the float comes up and pinches off the flow that's coming here. So it'll just keep working its way down, and then we'll have to change out this bucket. Um, very soon. Very soon, yeah. So what we are, this is now the, the uh, cream stream. Let's come. All right, so we're, you can see our leak is still going pretty good there, but we're also, uh, we're now on our third pail of, of milk. The pigs are extremely happy. And uh, we're at, uh, I don't know what that is right now. We're probably, probably about three, about three liters or so of uh, cream. And uh, we've got all 45 liters of cream in, or of milk in there right now. Um, and we're only expecting to get like four liters of cream. So we 
we'll definitely have to address the leak that we have. And again, this was an old um, an old separator that we had bought. We didn't pay a great deal of money for it. Um, we've only used it a couple times, so we will get this working better as we use it more often. But still, for the volume of milk that we're losing right now, it's really nothing. Alright, so now I'm unplugged it, um, but because this thing, I don't know what the speed is on it is, but it's going to be very high. Um, it's going to take like literally probably 10 minutes to slow down. Um, but our, all of our milk streams have stopped now, and I suspect that the uh, really heavy cream that had come to the top of our bottles is probably jammed in all those plates right now. There, that'll make it a little quieter. And now the worst part of this whole separator um, is the cleanup. But at the same time, it's just as easy to clean up after 45 liters as it is to do it after 8 liters. So we just kept a week's worth of milk. Uh, and again, we're calf sharing. The calf is having all she wants. Uh, we're milking morning and night um, of our cow, uh, Jersey cow, Windsor Rose, Barnabas Honeybee. And uh, yeah, so the cleanup now is, is the worst part of it. And we can't take any of that apart until, uh, until it slows down. Thanks folks, thanks for watching. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe, please do so.